and welcome to Chatbox with Sam. Tonight's guest is writer, producer, director, Asif Akbar. Good evening, Asif. How are you? Good evening, Sam. Thank you for having me here. I'm, you know, delighted to be here chatting with you. Oh, you're welcome. And I'm honored that you attended Chatbox with Sam this evening. You have an amazing career behind you. Even at a young age, you were very inspired by people around you, including your father, Anayat Akpar Milon, so um, that you made a, a movie with him in 2007, and it was shown at the New York International Film Festival. Um, yeah, yeah, and uh, we've actually, you know, I've had the honor and pleasure to be able to make quite a few with him, and uh, even as a producer, uh, in Bangladesh, and that's where he kind of, you know, had his uh, business in the in producing, you know, film and television. And I kind of grew into understanding that it could be a business. So being in um, a mixed cultural uh, society, uh, growing up, you know, in a, a small town in Ohio, uh, and also being an Asian family, there are most times expectations of you going into a more secure uh, profession like oh, being a doctor or an engineer or a lawyer businessman whatever but from an early age my dad uh, gave me that opportunity to be able to explore what I wanted to be when I grew up and that was a question that a lot of people around me used to ask and I think most kids get you know asked what do you want to be when you grow up you know by their elders around them mm -hmm. friends and family and for me um you know, whether, you know, those people know it or not, they helped inspire me to uh, be curious enough to explore in my own mind, like, hmm, I really wonder what I can be. And then as I was watching movies, I used to love watching movies when I was a kid. I mean, that was my most favorite thing to do at two, three years old, as far as I can remember. And my curiosity is to always um, be in the fascination of, of how these movies are made and how can one actor be so many different characters and play so many different roles of, right. you know, in one movie, they can be a doctor, another movie, they can be a policeman, another movie, they're, you know, a bad guy or whatever. And, and so that fascinated me is like uh, all these different people playing different roles and then telling all these stories yes. that, you know, after an hour or two hours, you know, when, once the movie ended, in my mind, I always carried on, if, especially if it was a movie I liked and characters I was invested in. Mm -hmm. Even at that age, I used to carry on in my head uh, and create my own stories with these characters. And so as I grew older um, throughout my childhood with that fascination, um, I matured more into understanding the concept of how films came together. You know, you have to write the story and then you have to um, uh, then figure out a way how you're going to uh, bring all the elements together to produce it. And then you have to direct it, you know, um, shoot it, uh, edit it and then put it out there to the audience. So it's a process and it's a business at the same time. Right. So once I figured that out, I also um, started in the beginning thinking like, OK, if I want to tell my stories, if I want to make movies, I have to be an actor because they're mostly the face of the movie, you know, Absolutely. and, uh, but in reality, it's all the behind the scenes that brings it all together. And in the business side of it, you, you know, unfortunately the actors don't have much control in telling the story. They're more right. of portraying it on screen. Um, but I also love the collaboration process of being able to give actors and the crew members and department heads uh, enough freedom to be able to put their skill sets to use and bring their creativity and and um, expertise to help as a team to right. make the best movie we can all together, you know. So um, that's part of the process and style that I like to work in. With all the encouragement you received um, and the inspiration you received from your peers and your father, how would you encourage the younger generation into this industry? Um, I would encourage, you know, to figure out first that you really want to do this and that you are passionate enough to um, take on 
this long-term journey to figure out and have the trials and errors to really, um, uh, you know, for sure know that no matter what, you know, yes, there will be struggles, sacrifices, and hardships along the way. It may take years, you know, and usually they told us uh, it takes a good solid 10 years to really get established in um, what you want to do in this industry. And it's very true. And, you know, I, I was fortunate enough to be able to start at a very early age to where I'm now, you know, getting to be able to do this almost 20 years in my career professionally. But I started very young, you know, and with the, a lot more um, uh, assurance uh, and confidence in myself that, yes, this is what I want to do. Some people, you know, um, uh, learn that about themselves a little later in life, and that's okay. And, and this is, I think, one of those industries where the more knowledge you gather from life in general, from all walks of life, no matter what you've done, what careers you've had, if you want to now transition into making movies, and uh, whether you, you want to just write scripts and tell your stories and pass it on to a producer and director, uh, or you want to explore acting, be a character actor at a later age, mm -hmm. or whatever it is, direct, uh, you have the ability to be able to um, utilize all the life lessons. And, and that's what, even as a filmmaker, we have right. to have that open mind of continuing to, um, you know, learn and 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 I do every project I do, depending on the subject matter it is, uh, and the different people we work with, we're always learning more things than consuming uh, new knowledge like a sponge. And, and it's like uh, one of the most fascinating things. And that's what really also um, inspired me to follow this journey of being able to just be in the school of life for life, you know, until we die we just we keep learning and that's now part of the job right so that, that's an amazing advice actually do not give up you know don't you shouldn't give up and, and uh, you know and and there will be failures and if mm -hmm. if you don't fail you don't get the best lessons i feel like and that's when you really also know yeah no this is no matter what you're going to keep going and not give up and there will be days where, you know, uh, you start questioning yourself. It was this right? Because, you know, obviously there's always going to be people that are opposed to it. You know, even though I had the support from my father, there were times even my mom and, and she'll admit it now. And, and now she loves it. You know, she sees, you know, I've, I've been able to make a career out of it. She even admits like she was, you know, wrong because there were times when she would encourage me to uh, find a more guaranteed career path, either, even if it was in business or mm -hmm. whatever, engineering. Um, you know, it was just more scarier for her because she's a little bit more traditional. But my dad understood that, you no, know, there are opportunities to uh, make a living uh, off, you know, in this industry, even if I didn't become a director, as long as I pursued uh, that path, maybe I would end up being an assistant director or a producer just, or, or something in the industry because he knew that I really wanted it. I also told myself growing up throughout high school and everything is like, you know, I don't want to waste time to the point where because it's such a competitive industry, I know this is what I want to do. I, I If I'm going to try this, I need to try it as early as possible in my life. So if I do somehow realize down the road, no, this isn't for me, or I fail, then at least I'll have enough time to, you know, shift gears and find another path. Um, but luckily, you know, I, I was able to stick it uh, through. Um, and so, uh, you know, it, it, it was uh, something that I just uh, knew that I didn't want to regret looking back 10 years later that, oh, I should have just went out and tried. Um, and also I was building towards it. It's not like that I just went out blindly to Los Angeles uh, out of, you know, small town Ohio. I actually started, you know, started doing some work and a project before I even moved out there. I came out to, you know, L.A. six months before that uh, to do um, some work. And and that prepared me to know what I was coming into. And so I was already making some connections and communications with people that, uh, I was building a network with here. Right. So as soon as I came here, I was starting to, you know, do things and work with people and be in the environment that I needed to be. Um, 
and and just you know kept it going yeah i saw you move to los angeles when you were like 18 and then, yeah um, and you and in 2011 um uh you got a bachelor's degree um for the fine fine arts yeah uh, in television and yeah. cinema productions out of columbia uh of hollywood in um los angeles and uh it, it was a very hands-on school that was a good foundation because you know i went to some of the other uh, prestigious um universities there in la for orientation to you know see you know what their programs were like and they're very very high end prestigious schools but i also went to uh, columbia as one of the you know, um, five, I had like five that I was going to visit. Yeah. And when I went to Columbia and I saw how hands-on it was from week one, the first class, they hand you a camera to make a short film. You're engaged in, in um, learning all aspects of the business hands-on. And I was lucky enough to also have training before that because I was already creating content yes. from yeah. an early teenage. And my high school actually offered um, our high school district in Ohio, Parma City School Districts. They were wonderful because they had um, options for different career vocational programs. You know, if you wanted right. to go into culinary or uh, auto or business or whatever and then they also had a radio and television pro program where you learn even television film production and media so obviously you know by you know naturally i was um, in that program um for two years my junior and senior year and it's a very serious hands-on program because half of your days uh three quarters worth uh, um of your a day in school for two years is all focused on that career vocational program. So I was already pretty much in film school um, from 16, 17, 18 that prepped me to going into college. So everything they teach you the first year, two years of college, I already went through in high school and then I was already making content. So when I went to film school, and because it was so hands-on and they opened up all these resources to where we had editing labs, we had, you know, um, like-minded people that wanted to, you know, work as crew. Yeah. Um, we had rental equipment, rental production insurance that the school would provide us with. So that was like a dream come true for me to keep creating content and making movies and everything I did, even if it was a class project, I made it with the intention, like it will be seen somehow, whether it goes to a film festival, it's not just going to be a for grade. It's, it's going to be a real movie. That's how I just made everything. And I started blending the two where I was making a lot of pro professional productions and content. And then, um, you know, I was getting school credit because I was also working at the time professionally in the craft that I'm going to school for. So they were very open and, and uh, willing to work with me to support me even um, being able to explore and, and get paid work while right. being in college. Um, that was part of the training. And a lot of times um, I brought on a lot of my fellow classmates and, and students from there um, and brought them on jobs, paid jobs that I was working on. And we kind of all grew together. Um, and so the school was very supportive. And at that time, you know, Hollywood was in a, in a very, um, you know, uh, I would say it was a nice time because uh, there were a lot of uh, evolution going on and changes yes. with the digital age and then with the whole, um, you know, DVDs to streaming and, and you know, more and more uh, channels opening up right. and opportunities to make more content where it was a very exciting time to grow into you know, working professionally and having more opportunities at the same time open up for everyone together, even the oldies, you know, the old school people that have been doing this for 30, 40 years. Now they had to adapt and we all had to kind of learn right. and adapt together into this new system. So it, it kind of even the uh, playing field a little bit uh, for some of the indies to uh, come up, you know, with more opportunities. MR9 based on a novel series out of Bangladesh. It's actually a spy novel series. Uh, pretty much your uh, Bangladeshi James Bond. 
uh, it was inspired from, you know, um, those kinds of uh, spy uh, novels and films uh, for over uh, 60 years, 60, 70 years. Uh, um, you know, it's been a franchise of one of the best and top selling, most popular novels in Bangladesh. And uh, it's the Masud Rana series. And Masud Rana is the, um, you know, agent, the spy uh, with the code name MR9, just like how, you know, James Bond is 007. So this would be um, the second time in its uh, franchise history, we would be uh, putting it on film. There was a film made in 1974 that, um, you know, was made in India and Bangladesh. And it did well, but since then, you know, there were um, not any rights given until we had secured the rights uh, a few years ago, and then we've been developing it. But because of the pandemic, it's such a, a much bigger project, and we're shooting in multiple different countries uh, with a lot, you know, more different actors. It's been challenging to uh, get all the availabilities and line everything up. So there were delays with it, but we're finally now uh, later this year we're going to be uh, going into production, uh, you know, God willing, if everything goes well. So that's a very exciting project that uh, I'm looking forward to uh, uh, getting into and getting done. And if you could speak a little bit about front lines and smoke filled lungs. Um, front lines was, um, yeah, I mean, that was a, a kind of like a school project I did with a lot of my schoolmates and, um, uh, also just friends so we, we kind of like put it together over a week and I think we shot that in one day or one or actually two days um, as kind of like a pilot to a web series um, but we kind of shot it more cinematic way and uh, I've always liked to work with veterans and tell veteran stories military stories and um, you know because there's so much there to tell and explore and as yes. you can see and in my patterns of uh, a lot of the movies I do, they always deal with some sort of a military or, or veteran uh, backstory or, or something connected with, um, you know, law enforcement, because that's such a big part of uh, our society worldwide. Uh, you can always find interesting stories linking Absolutely. in with, uh, with those kinds of characters. So, um, yeah, and, and so from there on, uh, Smoke Filled Lungs was another movie that actually dealt with uh, veterans and PTSD. Mm -hmm. And it was about a soldier who's, you know, trying to overcome his drug addiction due to his mm -hmm. PTSD and injuries from war, which is a very, very common and, and uh, unfortunate situation in our society um, that a lot of us don't really think about much. And, and so that can lead to so many more disasters you know, suicide, or, yes. you know, a lot of times, you know, uh, drug addictions, dealing with, you know, this disease or this problem, yeah. it's their family, their friends, anyone that's close by. Yeah. Um, and that's what we explore in the Commando as well. You've produced and wrote the movie Commando? Yeah, I was one of the writers and I'm actually the director. Mickey Rourke, Jeff Fahey. Um... Michael J. White. Yes, Michael J. White, John Enos, uh, Gianna Capali, Nikki Horde. There's some great, amazing cast there. Which is yeah, it's an ens that. ensemble, uh, Cowboy Cerrone. Um, there's uh, quite a few different interesting characters in there from the good guys and the bad guys side. You know, my style of filmmaking that I've been kind of developing and, and working with trying to establish is is to uh, implement in as much realism in the scenes, whether they're action scenes or just uh, the moments where you really start to feel for the characters and the development of their characters and the backstories um, and what goes through their minds and how it affects each of the characters around them. And I tried to explore that even on the bad guys side of the movie, you know, the villains, that the villain played by Mickey Rourke, what his motive is and the people that he's involving that are close to him, uh, what their motive is uh, for doing what they're doing um, and a little bit of their backstory. And same thing with uh, our hero, Michael J. White. He has a flaw that we established and focused on was his PTSD and how he's now, even though he's this big macho man, 
we showed that it's okay for him to understand and accept right. um, for his family's sake that he has a problem and he right. has to face it and try to seek help and with with all the options he has to talk to a therapist to even talk to his own wife you know and be open about it to you know find the treatment um and and explore different options and then during that time as you're getting treatment as you're learning to control it once an outside danger comes in and that situation puts your family at risk and threat right. you have to be able to control and and turn that switch off and be able to save your family that's the heroic story of him oh. you know becoming and overcoming and, and being that hero um so it builds up to the events that unfolds into that whole showdown but um it's not like that typical you know if you're uh, big action movie fans like myself even that are used to seeing Michael Jai White as the martial arts and you know action star just fighting kicking butt the whole way um, that's not that type of a movie this is more of a crime thriller with action and fighting supporting it and you know obviously we have fighters like Cowboy Cerrone there's fight scenes with him uh, Mickey Rourke actually uh, after a long time, he actually told me this was one of the films after a long time, I think several years since he did his own fight scenes. And he did. He, he fought and yeah, did his own stunts on it. Yeah. yeah. And he was still tough and he worked his, you know, uh, really, really hard with us. He was committed to it. The time he was there, it was a very short shoot. We shot the whole movie in 11 days. Um, wow. So, uh, yeah. And, and so we all had to be able to work together you know, in sync and efficiently to be able to pull that off, to not waste any time and just uh, um, bring that vision to the screen. Out of all the charities that are in this world, which charity would you choose to advocate for and why? Uh, I would say, you know, the I, I, I wouldn't want to say anything in particular right now, but because, you know, I want to be able to let people choose. But uh, the one um, uh, section I would say is orphans for, you know, orphanages or different orphan organizations around the world where there are um, children that don't have parents that are starving or don't have a home or, or the resources to be able to have a chance in life. Um, to, to have some sort of a normal life because, you know, with, with not having, you know, the parents and that kind of a support system of a family even, um, you know, could make a big difference in life. And I've known that just because I know what it means to have the support system, um, of whether it's the parents or loved ones close by with family, that support you get from you know, that environment and, is yeah. priceless and, and something that a child needs more than anything growing up throughout their childhood and, and teenage years. So I would encourage, and I do myself, is, is any uh, con contribute to any charity that has to do with children, children's health, children, you know, that are orphans that don't have, you know, the resources or abilities um, and they need all the help we can, you know, contribute. Perfect. How is music influenced your life uh it's a big part of what we do even making movies and the uh, content we make uh, music i always say is like 50 percent of it because it creates the mood and the feelings of whatever you want to achieve in that scene if you pick the wrong music you can completely kill it and get a whole different you know version of uh, of whatever movie or scene you're making because uh uh, at the end of the day, you, you know, music is universal. That's a universal language that can make anybody feel any emotions depending on the tune and how you present it. Um, so for me growing up, I was a huge music fan and and that always pulled me into a movie. And I grew up watching mixed cultural, you know, movies. I mean, from all over the world, Bollywood films, and you know, and even in Bangladesh, music is a very big part of movies and marketing. And right. and so I grew up, you know, with that, um, just kind of being naturally part of making movies. So I made that a big part of, um, you know, my uh, 
I guess um, one of my pet peeves in my movies is that the music has to be just right. So uh, I think a lot about that when I make the movies. Thank you. Some of these movies, you know, we have to accept and understand what kind of movie we're making going into it. Um, so it helps. Uh, most of my movies, I have the distribution ahead of time before I make it. So that helps a lot to understand who you're making it for, what kind of a movie you're making, what audience you're making it for. So if you try to treat every movie like you're going to win an Oscar in it, then you're going to keep chasing the tail and, and never finish it. And you're going to try for perfection and, and nothing like that exists in this business you just you, you either click with it or you don't but if you don't at the end of the day it still has to be delivered and released to the public and you just can't make everyone happy you just have no. to accept that you're always going to have a 50 50 or majority that likes it, majority that hates it uh, people that don't even know about it but you know you just got to finish it and put it out there give it life and then move on to the next one one of the most important things i learned uh, you know throughout my journey is that you can't dwell on one project. And I've done that and I've wasted some time. I've wasted energy. I've, 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 you know, gone into a lot more, you know, depression state of, you know, I need to do it the way I wanted to do it. But no, you, you got to accept um, that as soon as you can let that go and let that movie live and move on to the next one, more doors of opportunities will open up naturally for you to be able to do better. As long as you learn from the past mistakes and successes and failures, pick up the pieces and continue to do better, it, you'll have better opportunities. Right. And I agree with you 100%. Is mm. there anything that no one has asked you in an interview that you would have liked them to ask you? Mm, that's a, that is a tricky question. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you know, people always ask me, yeah, it, you know, how I got started and, and like what um, inspired me and, and, you know, my parents support and inspiration and all that. That's a very common question. And I, I always, you know, talk about that. But one thing, you know, a lot of people know that I'm busy and I work, but, um, you know, my current home life, I don't really get to talk much about it. So it's a little bit more uh, reserved and private. And, and it's, it's sometimes I wonder, it's like, you know, some people don't really ask, you know, how my home life is now or, you know, do I have a wife or a kid? And actually, you know, I have a lovely wife that's very supportive. I mean, without her, I couldn't be now continuing to be in this career and in, in a crazy career where, you know, I'm all over the place uh, and I'm working so much with a newborn. I mean, not a newborn, but she's, uh, you know, Aww. a year and a half old. Uh, What's her name? still a baby to us, uh, Meisha, you know, Aww. Meisha Akbar. And so, um you know, she was born in 2020, she's a pandemic baby, you nice. know, so we're new parents still, and we're coping with that. And, and it's, a, it's such a, you know, blessing, and a magical time at home. And that's also kept the fire going in me and motivating me to, you know, just working more trying to, you know, make bigger, better movies. And, yeah. and then at home, I have that support system where my wife understands the business. And so she's been a very, you know, good, um, you know, other half. They support. say they say behind every good man is a good, strong woman. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's a very, yeah. very true. And, you know, in your childhood, you know, you're, you're, you have your mother and, and even your father's, own, you know, support. I know a lot of the support my dad was giving me. My, You know, he couldn't without my mom's 100% support right. next, being next to him. And to, to have that good, healthy family environment life is important for uh, the child even and then once we grow up then in the next phase we have our own family and to have that support carry on is right. very important throughout I, I think it's I think it holds good family values you know if you support each absolutely other, yeah and, and it gives good foundation for the children but congratulations on your beautiful daughter thank you thank born. you so much there was a lot of babies my daughter's just had a baby actually Cool. Oh wow! Congratulations! Yeah, so you're, Aria, yeah, Jane, you're Aria Jane. She's absolutely gorgeous. She doesn't stop smiling. Oh, lovely, like... lovely, lovely. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I know. There's, uh, I mean, and especially now, like, and and in a way, I'm like, you know, blessed um, that you know she's been healthy. 
Yes. And at home too, I, I had some time to spend with, mm-hmm. you know, my wife and baby yeah. um, during the pandemic. You know, there were times where even though we were in pre-production or post-production, I was working from home. Mm-hmm. The only time I really had to go and work long periods was when we were shooting. And then back usually in the normal uh, times, uh, we would be going out to a studio doing post-production for months. Before that, we would be going out to meetings regularly doing pre-production. But now, you know, so much of it ended up being home-based with, you know, Zoom calls and meetings online um, that me- minimized, you know, uh, the time being outside. So I did get to spend some good quality time with the family that, that was, you know, very important, I think, at this time. What hobbies do you do outside that, that really... Um that really fill your soul up, really make you step out of yourself, out of work and and just be you, um, do you like? You know, I, I do like, I mean, I, I like to just spend the time I can or get, you know, at home. Um, when I have the ability nowadays, you know, I like to relax, watch other movies, other people's work, um, TV shows. Sometimes I like to catch up on really good TV shows that I know. Uh, that I can kind of binge watch if I have certain nights where I know can my wife and I can sit together and spend some time and watch some TV shows. Mm. Every night we will watch like an episode and spend at least two hours, three hours together. Um, I like that quiet time at home. And then obviously I like to, you know, spend time with family, um, go hiking, you know, maybe go out to eat. Um, just, you know, go out to the park with the baby, yeah. just, you know, normal everyday, you know, life that we don't really get to unwind with when we're constantly on that roller coaster life right. of, of making, you know, movies and, and dealing with other worlds, you know, especially being a director and visualizing, you know, other people's lives and trying to bring that to the screen. Um, you kind of get lost in what your life is all about you know so to be able to spend that time with family and kind of come back to uh the sense of reality of what you're doing it all for is a a very important mental support i think that also reminds you of the motivation you should have every day that's awesome and asi thank you very much for attending chat box with sam um, thank you, Sam. It's been a pleasure. It's been an honor and a pleasure to talk to you. You too. Thank you. Thank- Good-